Okay, folks, today we're going to embark on a project. A project involving, well, this machine over here and a replacement of that thing. So let's get into it. So this is a Dell Optiplex 790 small form factor that I bought off of my friend Chris because he was uh, obviously you know, in the process of trying to sell it, but we ended up figuring out what was going on with it, being that it was a CPU fan issue. So coincidentally, along with the Dell Studio XPS 7100, I bought this machine alongside it. So I figured, what the heck, we'll buy a replacement CPU fan, which I did, and we're going to replace it. But obviously I don't recommend anybody do this, especially if you're in a dormitory environment like I am right at the moment, but I'm a baller. We're gonna try powering this thing on with a bad CPU fan, just so y'all can get a bit of a listen to it. And spoiler alert, you probably have already heard this as far as some of the social media channels, like you know some of the Discord servers I'm in. You may have heard this already, but uh, well, I guess you'll hear it again. Now, headphone users, beware. This is extremely loud. Do not listen to this with high volume. This is your warning. All right, I'm not gonna have this thing on for long, but uh, here goes nothing, YOLO. It sounds so bad. <laughs> okay, now with the ear rip out of the way, we can proceed with the uh, replacement procedure of the uh, blower fan here. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug it from the motherboard. I've already got my replacement over here, which is not a Foxconn. It's actually a, a Delta fan. So hopefully it's a little bit better shape than this one is. So... We've already had our fun dissecting this one, so there's one broken clip, and I didn't bother to put back in the metal bracket that is on this side of the fan that helps keep it in place. So I didn't even bother, I just left it out. So when I dispose of this fan, I'll actually put the bracket with it. So anyway, so there's five screws holding the fan on. There's three around the actual fan part itself, and then there's two around the front where the bracket will attach the fan. And they're just Phillips head screws. They're fairly easy to remove. Nothing difficult about it at all. So once these are out, the fan will literally just come right off the heat sink. I'm going to take this last screw off because I need to. And there we go. And now she's off. And uh, yeah, this is a... Uh, got a bad bearing in it or something and it's just binding up on the top cover and it's left a nice ring of scratch marks whereas this one here doesn't have that issue well not nearly as bad and it actually spins freely so this fan is in much better uh, actual condition than anything so get the bad fan out of the way and let's mount the good fan A little laugh if I grab the bad fan and try to put it back in. Another thing too, when you're lining this fan up, there's two little uh, bigger sized notches in the back of the case. That's uh, this uh, size hole is where the notch for the uh, fan mounting holes will go, and so it'll just kind of sit in like this. And yes, they are designed to kind of sort of stick out like that at least initially. That way you can get it lined up. And that way, when you get the screws in, they'll not stick out of the case. But they're just there for reference, so that way you can uh, line up the holes. So now, I just need to put it back in the five screws. I'll we'll actually plug this in. And then we can go ahead and put it all back together and fire it back up and hopefully not have that horrible screeching noise. All right, so I haven't bothered to throw in any additional componentry, or for that matter, a hard drive until I see this thing power on and not sound like it's going to uh, sound like a saw blade. That's uh, just scratching against plastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the power cord in right now. Ooh, that sounded a heck of a lot nicer. <laughs> it's not actually, like I mentioned, sounding like a saw blade. Let's see if we can get into the BIOS. Oh, that's actually much quieter, much quieter. That's actually quite nice. Not that loud, actually. Kind of surprised for a small form factor. Needs a BIOS update, but... 
Yeah, it's not too bad, actually. That's livable. All right, so we've got 16 gigs of RAM. We've got a Core i7-2600. My mouse is not detected as per usual. That's okay. Uh, possible I can tab over and scroll down. Yes. Okay, cool. It was in UEFI mode. All right, cool. Need to reset the date and time. Apparently the clock battery is moved at some point. Otherwise, basically everything in here looks about what you would expect. Not gonna go through this BIOS in great detail. It's really, that was about the majority of this thing's repair was well, just replacing the uh, blower fan and it's good to go. So at this point, I'm gonna go uh, hopefully find me a working hard drive and I'm gonna maybe try to get a video card working in this. I haven't decided yet. And uh, maybe I'll post a little, uh, put a little update at the end of this just to show where I'm at with this. I'm probably gonna put uh, Linux on it, but I don't know. Maybe if I find a big enough hard drive, I'll do a Linux and Windows 10 dual boot. I haven't decided yet. All right, it's time to play hard drive Monopoly. I have this two terabyte Seagate Barracuda drive. I believe it is toast. Um, if I remember correctly, this is what the issue was with this drive, but I never really labeled it as such. So this will kind of be like my uh, confirmation if it actually works or not. So let's find out. It's making some curious noises. Sounds happy to me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't expect it to be bootable. Did it even detect in the BIOS? I doubt it. Nope, didn't detect it, not surprisingly. Junk. Okay, if I remember correctly, this drive works. Let's find out. Sounds good. Okay. Never minding the dumps is in the background. Oh yeah, there we go. 320 gig hard drive. Sweet. So that means I can install this one in the case. And then we can uh, get an operating system installed. As far as GPUs are concerned, I'm thinking I might just toss my NVIDIA GeForce. How the heck is that thing? It's my GT710 PCI Express X1. It's over here. And now we don't have to suffer with one of these crappy HD 5450s. But maybe it might be worth the comparison to try three different graphics cards. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. I have to like play around with some dongles or whatever, but uh, maybe I'll do like a HD 5450 versus HD 8490 versus GT710 PCI Express X1. That could be a fun video, maybe for another day though. But uh, I gotta get this converted over to a low profile bracket, anyways, if I'm gonna do that. So, uh, yay, nut drivers! And then, uh, yeah, we'll get an operating system installed in this computer, and that will wrap this video up basically. So, uh I guess I'll time lapse to when everything's all done. And there we go. Clean install of Windows 10. I'm obviously not gonna keep that solely on this machine, although I technically could. What I'll probably end up doing is doing like a uh, dual boot between uh, Windows 10, uh, Windows and Linux. There we go. I was gonna say Windows 10, but we already know Windows 10. Or just do a straight up Linux install. I haven't really decided yet, but either or is a likely candidate particularly just because of the fact that I've got the uh, NVIDIA graphics card in there. So we'll have to see how that works out. But at least in the meantime, you know, it's got Windows on it, so I at least have something to boot up. So that's nice to see. Otherwise, at this point, that's basically it for this video. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. If you want to see more content on this, just like you might want to see more content on that Studio XPS 7100, let me know down below in the comment section. So until then, I'm going to get out of here. So thank you all for watching. Catch you all in the next one.